Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here. You know what? I wasn't going to do this video until I saw a YouTube video of Stephen Fryer talking about political correctness and culture wars. Do you remember the days when we used to get triggered when the EU wanted to change the name of our very own Yorkshire puddings? A beautiful British delicacy, which most of you will know about, but that's how it began. This is how they sowed the seeds of doubt. We are now in a situation where SJWs have invaded our media, our entertainment industry, dumbing down the content that we get, putting women and minorities in prominent roles, while making males in their 40s the enemy. We see it. Sometimes it's done very delicately, and sometimes we're bashed over the head with the most sharpest, most heaviest sledgehammer. 2018 has seen this toxicity get even worse. I am a man in my 40s. I am constantly attacked for being a man in my 40s by so-called feminists who I call fake feminists because as I challenge these so-called women who call themselves feminists, a real feminist campaigns and talks about the women in the third world who are suffering from being raped and tortured and their genitals chopped and sliced and terrible injustices but these people don't care about those women who really need help. They're talk, they're talking, they fight for spoiled women in the Western world. This is the hilarity, the irony of it all. Everyone wants to put a stop to homophobia, transphobia, racism. I do. I have Greek Cypriot blood inside me and I was born and raised in the UK. And I faced terrible racism at school and it was truly horrible. But the means that the SJWs are going about solving these problems are wrong. <clears throat> to be honest with you, they frighten me because I've read a lot of history books about the Second World War. My mother is Jewish. Um, so, you know, when, <clears throat> when I was younger from older members of the family, I heard a lot of frightening stories as well. So culture and heritage is very important to me. And what I see is the SJWs are echoing the Nazis. I don't want to be frightened by these people, but they do. Because they want to have minorities and females in prominence, but they want to hammer down men, especially white men in their 40s. Why? Why? This is what I don't understand. Now, they will tell us that white men are the enemy and they've done terrible things to women and minorities in the past maybe six, seven decades. But I'm not those people. Two wrongs don't make a right. Culture wars. This is what it is. We are all at war. In the end, we are going to destroy each other through our hatred for one another. You want to solve these issues of the world. Inequality of genders, inequality of cultures. But you don't do it by hating. Hate does nothing. But I hear these fake feminists and read them on social media all the time, talking about men like we're scum, like we're a wasp waiting to sting them and give them a rash. That's not me. Yes, I admit, I was brought up by homophobic parents. I was even brought up by racist parents. My parents are also transgender phobic. That's because they were brought up in a different world. Now, when I was young, I obviously, because I was brought up with them, I kind of agreed with these things. But through media, television, education, I knew that was wrong. And the first time I realised that my parents were wrong about everything is when I saw Captain Jack and the Doctor kiss on the lips in the season one finale of the Doctor Who arrival. Because I cried. Because I thought it was a beautiful moment. That doesn't make me a hero because I accepted something that I should have accepted in the first place. But I realised I was changing. You see, TV can be a great place to educate 
and stamp on hate. But even back then in 2005, 2006, the playing field was different. Someone like Russell T Davies could educate people like me in the right way. And instead of us hating, we loved. That's why I call him the Welsh magician, the Welsh George Lucas. He's a genius. He helped me understand. And I'll always be grateful to Russell T Davies. But now people in television and media are different. They're very angry. They're very passive aggressive. They don't want to educate people who hate. They want to stamp them out. To stamp parts of humanity out like white men in their 40s. There's the hatred now. How can it be, how can it be tolerant to go onto Twitter and spew hate about every white man who's ever been born? You don't know me. You don't know who I am. Every human being has the potential to quash out the hate in their hearts and become better. But here's the thing. Nobody's perfect. There's got to be a balance in humanity. And SJWs want to destroy that balance. There can never be a human race where it's all positive and love for everything and everyone. Never. It will never happen. You are trying to take away what it is to be human. But yes, we want to stamp out as much injustice as possible. But we can't do it apart. We can only do it together. Some of the abuse I get for being a white man in his 40s is it weighs on me because I'm scratching my head like a child who's been told off. What have I done wrong? I've tried my best to become a better person. I'm a different person to what I was in my 20s or in my teens. A lot less selfish. Mainly that's because of the birth of my nieces and nephews who made me a better person. You see, I'm not a parent. I probably never will be, but those children are like my children, even though they're just my nephews and nieces. And they opened up my heart to the world. They changed me. And because um, I was a very selfish person and I was a very hateful, angry person at one point. But I changed. I evolved. People can evolve if you give them a chance through education, through television, through media. But what SJWs are now doing through media and television and film are something else. They're steering hate towards people like us and steering positivity and love through minorities and women. But there's a dangerous precedent here because SJWs refuse to admit that 25% of women are paedophiles, that 25% of women run paedophile rings with paedophile films, that 25% of women are capable of rape and abuse. There is this projection on our television screens and film screens now that a woman could never do anything wrong. There are many female characters who in the past were actually villains, but now they're more pure because a woman could never do anything wrong. I'm not here to talk against women. I'm talking about there's an injustice and there's an imbalance. I spoke about EastEnders and what they did with that consent storyline. It's the simple thing there that all men are bad and all women are just pure creatures that are all the victims of us horrible men. The truth is, we are all individuals. We are neither men or women. I'm developing a couple of stories here now, here in Cyprus, because I'm developing the first English speaking dramas here on Cyprus TV, a groundbreaking thing. I've never in my life, even when I was an amateur writer, even when I was recording my voice and playing all the parts on an audio cassette, when I was 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, I never kind of developed my characters in females or males or black or white or Indian or British. That wasn't my key element. My motivation and thinking was always looking at every single human being as a person. And I think that's how you create the best characters in this industry, whether you're writing for TV or film. But when you put everyone in a box, you say everyone in that box is the same. And we're not. This is, this is the dangerous thing now. So the hatred that we've seen in, in um, um, 2018 via Time's Up and things like that, Hollywood have created a system that, that says that all women should be believed. And, all, and I, I actually read a tweet from a woman the other day that, um, and I forgot the other organisation about harassment and rape um, that they created over in Hollywood. 
um, you can comment down below and remind me of it. But I was reading a tweet and said, it literally said this, so what if a few innocent men are accused? What about if, if, if it takes a few of them to be sacrificed to stop the others, why not? I'm not making it up. There's also something else these SJWs say, the worst men of all are nice men. Which means you can't win if you're a nice man. You can't win if you're a bad man. You can't win if you're just a bit of everything. We all are a bit of everything, men and women, right? That's what we are. We are flawed. But SJWs want to quash the flawed qualities that we have. They want to quash out what makes us human. That's why television and film made by SJWs is so boring, dull and bland. Because they want to create a utopia. There is nothing utopian about humanity's past. And there never will be about humanity's future. And the more SJWs go after this utopia, they believe that they believe that putting us down, us men down, will create this utopia. But all this drive for this utopia will create hatred. And one party or the other suffering, whether it's men, women, whites, blacks, Indians, whatever, right? Someone's going to suffer because trying to go for this perfection where we don't... You've seen it now. If someone... You can't even say what you think anymore without being accused of this, that or the other. Words. Not hammers, not knives, not guns. Words can be used against you. How many people in, in the public eye are defrocked from the love people have for them because of what they've said? We see it all the time. So it's, 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 this is where we are now. And unless we take a step back as people and realise that what both sides are doing is wrong. And to come together and just all we have to do is value each other as individuals and be kind. Isn't that what the doctor said? Be kind. Never be cruel, but to be kind. And right now, whether you're an SJW or on, you're on the other side, you're being cruel to each other. I am being cruel to you. You're being cruel to me. The only way we can win is by loving and respecting each other and value, valuing each other as individual people. And until we do that, the war's going to continue.